Hello. In this screencast, I'm going to demonstrate creating a virtual machine using Oracle's VirtualBox virtualiz virtualization software. I've chosen the Xbuntu distribution and already downloaded the ISO to my local hard drive. I've also already installed VirtualBox on my local machine. As an overview, I will open VirtualBox, configure a new VM, point the optical drive to an ISO file, boot the VM, enter the distro's graphical installer, complete the installation, and then start the desktop. Let's get ready to go. Currently you see the Oracle VirtualBox Manager screen on the screen in front of you. I'm going to click on Machine, click on New, I'm going to type Xbuntu Linux. I'm going to leave the default distribution type as Linux and Ubuntu 64-bit and click the Next button. I'm going to use 2048 as the recommended amount of RAM on my machine since I have 32 gigs. I'm going to click Next. I do want to create a virtual hard disk at this point. The, or, uh, virtual box is, is recommending 10 gigs. I'll stick with that and click the Create button. I want to use the native disk image, so I'll leave the default and click Next. I'll dynamically allocate my hard disk drive space so that it only takes up as much as is needed by the distro and click Next. And now it's going to ask me what the name of the virtual hard disk file should be and where it should be located. I'm going to go with the defaults and again leave it at 10 gigs and click on the Create button. You can now see that my virtual machine file has been created and it's indicated to be in a powered off condition. With that machine highlighted, I'm going to click on the Settings button. This will give me an opportunity to tweak the default settings that VirtualBox has selected for me. The main thing I want to do is go to Storage, and I want to click on my CD-ROM drive, and then I want to come over here to the drop-down for CD-ROM and choose a virtual optical disk file. As I mentioned earlier, I've already downloaded the ISO. Here is my Ubuntu 1804 Desktop AMD 64 ISO. I'm going to select that and choose Open. Now you see that the optical drive is populated with my ISO file. I'm going to leave all of the other settings as they are and click OK. Now I'm going to click the Start button for my newly created virtual machine file. Now, we're going to see VirtualBox begin to boot the Xbuntu Linux distribution. I'm going to dismiss this warning about the auto capture keyboard and the mouse pointer integration. And I'm going to wait for Xbuntu 18.04 to start up. And there we have our installation graphical installer. I'm going to make the window a little bigger and I'm going to say yes I want English and I'm going to go ahead and install Xbuntu. I'm going to again stick with the defaults for English and hit the continue button. I'm going to choose not to download updates for this demonstration only so the installation completes quicker. I do recommend that you download updates when you create your virtual machine. Click Continue. I'm going to leave it on the default, which is erase disk and install Xbuntu. And remember, this is the 10 gigabyte VDI file, or our virtual disk that we created in an earlier step. I'm not going to worry about encryption or logical volume management at this time and click Install Now. 
I get the warning that it's going to change my disk. Again, this is the virtual disk. I'm going to say, yes, I know, and continue. I'm going to leave my default time zone as New York and hit continue. And then I'm going to type in my name. Of course, you'll be typing in your student name in this box. And I'm going to call the name of this box Archie. I'm going to pick my username as Geek247. Enter in my strong password. Ensure that I have require my password to log in and click continue. Notice that I have all green checks and a strong password. And Xbuntu is going to show me a few splash greens as it copies files into the new virtual machine. Now because I chose not to download updates from the internet, this will go fairly quickly. So we can see that we're almost 80% of the way finished copying files. Notice also there's an arrow here where you can click and you can actually see the copy operations. Again, that was by clicking the arrow to the left of almost finished copying files. And it looks like it's now installing files to the system. Notice that back on the main screen, my virtual machine Xbuntu Linux is now indicated to be running. That's different from my other virtual machines that are either in a saved state, powered off, as you can see in the shelf there. Okay, so now you see that Xbuntu is slowly continuing the installing process, doing the hardware device discovery for the keyboard, creating the default user account, setting the time zone, checking for packages and language packs, <clears throat> and so on. We will continue to monitor this action as I give you a tour of the VirtualBox interface. First, I'd like to draw your attention to these menu options. There are some things I can do with file preferences uh, that you really don't need to mess with, but you can check them out later. Under the Machine tab, this is where I made my initial changes to the settings. One caution here is that some settings you will not be able to do while the machine is running. You'll have to power it down. A powerful feature is the snapshotting feature. So before you make any major changes or updates to a virtual machine file, you should take a snapshot. That way, should something go awry, you can recover quickly from a, uh, a catastrophic failure. Notice now at the bottom of this dialog, you have pause, reset, and ACPI shutdown. So these actions uh, will either pause your machine, uh, reset the machine, that's like turning the power button on and off on a physical desktop, or doing a graceful shutdown. The view option allows you to change how you're interacting with your virtual machine. You can go into a complete full screen mode, you can scale mode, you can adjust your window size to include auto resize. You can take screenshots and you can turn on and off the menu and status bars. You can also set the scaling factor within the virtual machine. So if you have a high DPI monitor, such as the one I'm recording this uh, capture session on, you can set a very high resolution and then use a scaling factor of between 100 and 200 percent to make the physical objects bigger on the screen. can be very handy. The input menu option allows you to send special keystrokes to your keyboard. 
So for example, you can do an insert control alt delete uh, or you can use the host and delete keys. Very important, very important. The host key in VirtualBox is defined as the right control key. That is to say, the control key on the right side of your keyboard. Remember that because you'll need it later on. Again, the host key is the right control key. Under devices, you can interact with the devices that are included as part of the host and guest portions of the computer. The host being the underlying physical box, the guest being the Xbuntu virtual machine. And as you scroll through these items, you can see where you can make changes. You can configure your shared folders in case you want to leave your machine isolated or allow bi-directional from your host to your guest or simply allow copying from your host machine only to your guest machine. You can also at some point insert the guest editions CD image and that will allow you to add extended features to your virtual machine. And then of course you have the help options that are available to you. Next I'd like to direct your attention to the lower right corner of the virtual machine where you see this row of icons. If you hover your mouse over the icon, you'll see that it corresponds to storage, optical drive, audio, network, USB, shared folders, the amount of video memory your machine is equipped with, whether you have video capture enabled, uh, this one controls the virtualization extended features. Your integration with your mouse pointer. For example, right now we see that because of the color scheme, the pointer is captured. And the right control key is indicated to be your host key. Notice also that I'm free to move my mouse between my host machine and my guest machine. So in this configuration, the mouse is always captured by the virtual machine when it has focus, meaning it has focus now, it does not have focus now. With that, we have almost reached the end of our installation. It looks like we're at about 80%. And we are just waiting for the final uh, configurations and settings to be set by the installer and we will then be able to move to the final phase of this screen capture presentation. Something else that I'll show you at this juncture is back on the main screen. You saw me interact with these buttons up here. You can also right click on the machine and you'll have all of the same options available to you in the right click context dialog. You also have access to the show log and be able to create a shortcut on your desktop for that actual machine. You can see that I just clicked on that and now I have a shortcut, shortcut to Xbuntu Linux on my desktop. Again, right clicking provides you access to those options. You'll notice that you can show the virtual machine, pause it, reset it, or close it. When you close the machine this way, you can save the state in other words, when you start it again, it'll come back up basically in the same state that you left it. You can do a graceful shutdown or you can do a power off. Okay, and it looks like we're still under the installation routine here. So we should have just a couple of more minutes. We can check on the progress at the command line by expanding the arrow again. And 
it looks like it's basically in the uh, process of uh, updating and removing packages. So as we let that continue, this is probably a good time to talk about uh, some of the choices that you may need to make uh, or edit uh, as you begin to use your virtual machine. Probably the most common is if we go to settings and network, is you may have to make changes to your network settings. Now it's unlikely that you'll have more than one network adapter in your machine, your host machine, uh, or even have the need to run more than one, one virtual network adapter. Uh, so typically uh, you can leave this on the default, but you may have to change it to either bridged or NAT network. For now we're going to leave it on NAT and not change it. If we go to advanced we can see some additional options that tells us the kind of adapter that it's uh, configured for use by the virtual machine, whether or not promiscuous mode is allowed, which can come in handy if you're doing uh, network scanning or enumeration with a tool like Wireshark, and the virtual adapter MAC address. It also enables you to connect or disconnect the cable and to do some rudimentary port forwarding. Now, notice that the adapter type, the name, and the promiscuous mode are grayed out. Remember earlier that I mentioned some settings cannot be configured while the machine is powered on. This is an example of that. So I'm going to click Cancel. I'm going to go back to the main machine and I see now that the installation is complete. I'm going to click on Restart Now. And Xubuntu is going to do a graceful shutdown. It tells me that I should uh, remove the installation medium. I'm going to go ahead and hit Enter. And wait for the machine to come back up. for is for Xubuntu to come up to the normal desktop for the distribution. Notice that the window just resized to the default resolution and I'm presented with a login prompt. So here I'm going to enter my strong password and click the login button. And at this point I should be up to a full desktop environment in my newly created Xbuntu Linux virtual machine. And you can see that I have full access to programs and console and I have my icons and if I do a quick ls minus lisa, I can run a command. So in summary, we opened our VirtualBox virtualization software, we configured a new virtual machine, we pointed the virtual machine to the optical drive indicating an ISO file that we had downloaded earlier, we booted the VM to enter the distro's graphical installer, we completed all of the steps through the guided installation, and then we rebooted the machine and came up to our full desktop environment. Thank you very much for watching, and good luck with your projects.